So I've been wanting to make a video about sustainable fashion for a really long time now. Fast fashion sucks, but today's video is not about why fast fashion sucks. Down below I'm going to have a bunch of links to like different documentaries and articles that just go into a lot of detail about just how terrible the fast fashion industry is because that's just a lot to go into in today's video. So I'm going to focus more on the different ways that you can be a more sustainable shopper. Before we start this video, there's actually this one point that I want to bring up. There's this one really great YouTuber, Ryan Finn. So basically the point that she brought up is that Shopping consciously and shopping like sustainably isn't necessarily going to help garment workers who are already dealing with the fast fashion industry because they're working at a big company that is a fast fashion company. But at the same time, you are empowering other workers who are able to have those opportunities and able to work in that industry without being taken advantage of. And it's really important to keep doing that. If your goal is to help the people who are currently placed in that crappy situation, I would highly recommend that you guys look into different organizations that you can just uh, donate to in order to help garment workers. I had looked up a bunch of places and I have them all linked down below that you can donate to. This is just to help workers unionize and kind of help them fight their own fights because, you know, we can have an idea of what we think is right for them, but at the end of the day, it all depends on what they think is right for them and the different things that they want is what's most important. So yeah, if you guys are interested in helping out, I will have some stuff linked down below. Another thing too is I'm going to be mentioning a lot of apps in this video. I just want to clarify things right now and let you guys know that this video is 100% not sponsored. If any of these companies did want to sponsor me, I would be more than happy to work with them. I am not in contact with any of these companies. I'm just, I actually use these services and I just, I want to share them with you guys. So yeah, now that that's all out of the way, let's actually start the video. So if you're thinking about like, shopping sustainably, there's three things you're going to be worried about. You're going to be worried about animal welfare, the environment, and of course, labor rights. So the first thing, in my opinion, is the best thing that you can do, because this is actually going to help garment workers who are working in the fashion industry, and that is to support um, brands that are really making an effort to make sure that their garment workers are treated the right way. Of course, these companies, like most of them, also care about the environment to an extent and animal welfare as well. However, I just, you know, if you're talking about being completely 100% like environmentally like sustainable, I think secondhand fashion is the way to go. Right now, I'm just going to talk about ethical shopping and basically all of that encompasses. So an ethical fashion brand is a brand that takes its workers' rights into consideration first and foremost, and then it also thinks about its environmental footprint and also, you know, thinks about the type of animal products they do or do not want to sell. You're probably not going to find a fur coat on any ethical fashion website. A lot of the stuff that they do sell though, a lot of them sell cashmere, wool, you know, as long as they're transparent about where they're sourcing their materials from, it's up for you to decide whether you want to buy those things or not. I'm not going to lie to you guys, unless you have a lot of money, you're going to have to change your shopping habits a lot. It's really difficult to go from fast fashion to slow fashion mindset. And I think it's really important though. It's an important part of being an ethical shopper and being a sustainable shopper is to adopt that whole mindset of buying fewer items that will last you longer, that you will wear more consistently. So yeah, the price point of these items is going to be substantially higher than what you're used to if you've exclusively bought fast fashion in the past just because you have to think about everything that goes on behind the scenes it's not easy for a brand to be this way you have to think about the people who are making the garments for them but they also have to be very transparent about their sourcing and all the materials that they're using and making sure that they're not harming the environment and it's just a lot of things to take into consideration and it can be difficult for some brands to do that so of course you know, the clothes are going to cost more money because all of that money is going towards these things so you can make sure that your clothes are being manufactured in a way that is sustainable so yeah when you do start shopping this way you're going to have to learn how to save up for clothes 
shopping has become a hobby. You know, shopping was never a hobby before. People would have to budget for clothing and save up for it and maybe buy a few pieces every season or whenever they needed new clothes. But it wasn't just something that they would do for fun to pass the time and just go shopping. Like that didn't really become a thing until quite recently. Fast fashion wants you to think that like, you know, shopping is this fun thing to do to just relieve stress and all that, but all it does is really put you in debt because you're spending a lot of money on fast fashion, probably more money than you realize if you go shopping a lot. And you would be saving so much money if you just invested in pieces that you're gonna wear over and over and over again and really thought about what you were bringing into your closet instead of just grabbing whatever's trendy at the moment. So if you're working at like a low paying job or if you're a student like myself, you'll probably have to save up for months to even like be able to afford one item and that's fine. Like just make sure it's something that you really, really love and something that you know you're gonna get a lot of wear out of. For me personally, I have these shoes by this French brand. They're on my wish list and they're so expensive well, not even really. I think that this is about average price for a pair of shoes. I think I've just bought like too many cheap vans and now I think anything over $60 is expensive for shoes. They are made out of leather that is ethically sourced. And yeah, the brand really cares about um, its environmental impact, its impact on like their workers and also, you know, making sure that their animal products are sourced sustainably. I try not to buy faux leather because faux leather in my opinion is like it's bad for different reasons like i think real leather and faux leather are both bad but for completely different reasons and i'm not gonna get into that in this video but no these shoes i love these shoes and i'm saving up for them and i have to save up for them because they're a little bit pricier than I, what I'm used to, but that's okay because I really love these shoes and I know that once I do buy them, I'll wear them consistently. So I think building a wardrobe with the whole slow fashion mentality is just finding things that you really love and then you know saving up for that item so you can add it to your wardrobe and be so happy that you are putting your money towards a good cause and you're helping support people and an industry that is more sustainable and cares more about the things that you care about and aligns with your own personal values. Okay, so obviously you're not going to build your whole wardrobe based off of clothing like this, like I said, unless you have a lot of money. But if you don't, if you're like me and you're just, you know, don't have that much money to spend on clothes, of course, secondhand shopping is such a huge thing now. This is the most obvious way to avoid fast fashion, I think. So yeah, secondhand shopping can be done at your local thrift store. If you want advice on how to conquer your local thrift store, you should check out my thrifting tips video. So yeah, in my opinion, thrifting is the best option if you are really worried about your eco footprints. So if you don't want to, you know, worry about like whether a brand is using materials that are, you know, good for the environment or not, or all these other things like, Obviously, if you go to the store and you buy clothes that have, you know, previously been worn but are no longer being worn, you are not wasting any new materials. So it's pretty good for the environment and it makes you feel pretty good. So yeah, there's many different ways you can do secondhand fashion. You can do vintage shops, like I said, at their store. And there's even secondhand clothing apps. So secondhand clothing apps are great if your thrift store sucks or if you just you enjoy shopping online more than you enjoy going in person and picking out new stuff. Some different secondhand clothing apps I like. The Real Real is really great if you love luxury pieces and you want to add designer pieces to your wardrobe but you don't want to break the bank and you also don't want to buy that item new because maybe it's made out of leather and maybe you only buy leather if it's second hand and not new. The Real Real is really great for that. I've never personally bought anything from them before because personally I don't really care about designer stuff that much, but if that's something that you really like, I would really recommend The Real Real and I'm sure you guys have already heard of it if you love designer stuff. But if you haven't or if you're like new to designer clothing and you're kind of interested in starting to invest in it but you don't know where to start, The Real Real might be a really great place for you to go to. Another app that's really great is Poshmark. 
So let me talk about Poshmark and Depop actually, because Poshmark and Depop are the two most popular secondhand clothing apps, I think. And I'm just going to talk about what I personally use them for because I use both of the apps, but I use them for different purposes. So for Poshmark, I use Poshmark when there is one specific item that I really want and I'm looking for it everywhere, but I can't find it. And the reason I check Poshmark is just because there's so much stuff on Poshmark. Like, I think it's insane how many clothes are on the app because you have people from all walks of life selling their stuff on Poshmark. Whereas with Depop, I think it's very much targeted towards a specific demographic. But with Poshmark, it's just like everyone selling their stuff on there. Even eBay, too. Poshmark is very similar to eBay, but it's just all clothes and eBay, you should also check eBay, but eBay is a little bit more difficult to shop on and I honestly might do a whole separate video on like buying secondhand clothing online because there's so many different things you can do and so many different places you can check out and I really do think I have to give you like a step by step for each one, but for right now I'm just going to focus, focus on Poshmark and Depop and what I use them for, so Poshmark is really great, like I said, for just that one specific item that you really want. For me personally, this was a pair of red leather pants. So I was seeing a lot of people styling red leather pants and for some reason I thought they were so cute and I just, I really wanted a pair of red leather pants, but I checked Depop and I couldn't find much of anything. When I checked Poshmark, I found a ton of stuff and bought these red leather pants right here. They're from Guess and I think they were like $18 or something ridiculous like that. Depop on the other hand is great for just like, I don't want to say like online window shopping, but I guess that's kind of what it's called just because you can browse around on there the way that you would another clothing website because everything is so well curated. The thing with Depop too that's really great is that it's it's very similar to Instagram and like the whole layout of it, but also like you can follow people on there and if you follow someone who has like a similar body type to you or someone who just has the same sense of fashion that you do, it's really awesome because every time you open your app you're just going to see something that's custom made and tailored just for you because you know that this person has your body, you know that this person likes all the stuff that you like and it's going to make shopping so much easier. If you're not looking for anything in specific and you just want to browse around and see what catches your eye, I would highly recommend Depop. So yeah, the only thing I recommend with these apps is um, don't go overboard. Like, like I said, adopting the slow fashion mentality is such an important part of, I guess, trying to be a more sustainable shopper. Am I actually wearing all the stuff that I'm buying or am I just buying it because it's cute and it's cheap and like now I have a bunch of stuff in my closet I'm not going to wear, like, don't do that. Try to be more sustainable. Try to buy clothes you're actually going to wear so that they don't just go to waste and rot in your closet. And another tangent on kind of secondhand clothing in general, if you have a bunch of old clothes that you don't want anymore, don't immediately think of donating it to your local thrift store. The reason I say this is because my aunt actually used to work at Family Thrift Center, which is like my favorite thrift store in Houston, and it's huge, and there's so much crap in there. She told me, like there would be mountains of clothes that she would have to sort through every day. And it was insane. Like there's so much stuff that just doesn't get sold. It's kind of nauseating to think of how many clothes are over there. And it's just like an overabundance of clothes is in these thrift stores. I think for some reason, a lot of people have this really weird misconception that like the thrift store is gonna run out of clothes if a bunch of people keep shopping over there. I guess if you live in a really small town maybe, but I know for my town at least, that is, mm -mm, that is a lie. There are so many clothes over there. It is insane. I've never seen an empty rack anywhere at my local thrift store. There's stuff everywhere. And like, honestly, like a lot of those clothes are not going to get sold. So if you have old clothes that you don't want anymore, I would call your local thrift store, maybe ask them like, hey, do you guys need new clothes? Cause like, maybe they do need new clothes, or maybe they don't. If they don't need new clothes, um, I would recommend just, like, donating them to a local church because they can go do something with them. Maybe seeing if there's any, like, women's shelters or homeless shelters in your area that are in need of new clothes. If there was a natural disaster, you can donate clothes to that. I know when Harvey happened, I donated a lot of clothes to the victims of Harvey. There's so many different avenues for you to donate your clothes through and it doesn't necessarily have to be the thrift store. I know for me personally, my father's side of the family is from Nicaragua and every time they go back to Nicaragua, I give them like, I give my uncle and my aunt a bunch of clothes I don't want anymore and they just give it out to 
the local people in the area who maybe can't afford to buy new clothes. But I think fashion is fun, so fun, right? But like, I think it's important to understand that even being able to buy fast fashion is such a privilege and it's something we take for granted because with fast fashion, you know, it's a way for you to just kind of express yourself and have fun with fashion. But for some people, like, they will never see fashion as like a hobby of theirs. But fast fashion has made it easier for a lot of other people to get into fashion and it's also a way to social climb too. Like I'm not going to lie, like there is a stigma around, you know, like obviously being poor, but like when you're poor, you don't want to look like you're poor. You want to look like you have money, maybe more money than you do. So you'll go out and spend more money on clothes because it's really important for people's public perception of you to be that of someone who's not poor. And I completely get that mentality. Back when my family had less money, this was something that we always did. Like I would always, you know, try to buy clothes that were really cheap and make them look like they were worth a lot more than they were so that I when it looked poor, like, I don't know, it's just, it's it's really difficult to explain this whole mentality, but I totally get that. So yeah, that's going to actually bring me to my last point, but before that, let me just quickly say something else you can do to avoid uh, shopping fast fashion. So there are a ton of small brands on Instagram and Etsy who are just getting started. It's really awesome to help these brands out. An important thing to think of with these brands is make sure that all of their clothes are manufactured in-house. Like the designers actually making the clothes themselves or they're having like a relative or somebody help them make the clothes and they're just selling them online and they're just getting started. Another thing too you can do is make your own clothes. This is something I used to do a lot more and it's something I'm trying to get into doing again. But another thing to think about with buying your own clothes is the material that you're using because a lot of fabric is made in a sweatshop and like I guess it's up to you to decide whether the sourcing of your materials is important to you. If that is something that's important to you, there's a ton of great places online that you can go to that sell fabric that is ethically sourced. Of course, you can also go to the thrift store and buy clothes there and like repurpose them into something else or you can even buy like bed sheets or something and use that as material. The only thing I would say is don't buy really large pieces of clothing because a lot of people are actually like that size and when they go to their store, they can't find many items in their size and the thrift store might be the only place that they can go to that will actually sell their clothes. So I like to not, you know, take that away from them, I guess, because I don't think that there's a chance that the thrift store is going to run out of clothes. I think that's ridiculous, but I do think it is a lot more limited when it comes to clothing in larger sizes and like shopping plus size in the thrift store is substantially more difficult, but I'm going to get into that in my last point. So finally, we're at my last point and um, yeah, I guess the way that this ties into everything else is just if you if you do buy fast fashion, I'm not going to lie, I do think that there are reasons why somebody would want to shop fast fashion. It could be for social climbing purposes, like I mentioned earlier. Um, even too, like I just mentioned about plus size clothing, a lot of ethical fashion brands do not make plus size clothing. I know Reformation, which is my favorite brand, they just started selling plus size clothes and I think that really says a lot because they're one of the biggest sustainable fashion companies out there. Even secondhand clothing apps like Depop and Poshmark, there's a lot less clothes that are going to be in your size. Even if you do find stuff in your size, like you don't know how it's going to fit on you because I know especially when you're plus size, you want to try your clothes on in person to see exactly how they fit on you because you know that like sizing doesn't mean anything. I can understand like if you have a job interview coming up and you need to buy a freaking blazer or something you're not gonna go to their store and like cross your fingers and hope that there's like one ugly blazer that's in your size that's unrealistic and i don't want anyone to you know feel like they're a crappy person just because they bought something from fast fashion retailer if anything i just want you guys to shop less and you know, be more conscious of what you're buying. Don't just buy all these trends that all these fashion retailers are telling you, like, this is trendy, this is what people are wearing now, if you wear this, you'll be cool. Like, those trends are gonna expire in like two weeks time and you're already gonna be out of fashion. I do think you can buy timeless pieces at a fast fashion retailer. I know some people will argue with me, but I think you can because I have a lot of things that I've bought from fast fashion retailers in the past that are still sitting in my closet now 
They're still in good condition. They're still in fashion. I still wear them and yeah, now I'm gonna mention my last app because I think it all ties into this whole last tangent perfectly and that is Good On You. So Good On You is this app and basically what it does is it ranks fashion retailers on three different metrics. Their labor, so like how well are the labor conditions for their company, animal welfare, it takes that into consideration as well. And it also, of course, talks about um, how sustainable this company is for the environment and its eco footprints that it's leaving behind. They rank different clothing sites from like one star to five stars. Five stars would be amazing. They recommend you go for fours and fives. I recommend that too, but sometimes, you know, if I really, really need something, I'll go for a three. Just a few examples of like, Different stores at the mall that are threes are Old Navy, Gap, Uniqlo. These two are pretty controversial, but um, Zara and H&M. Now Zara and H&M just barely got their three star rankings, I think, because um, they've been receiving a lot of backlash. And I think that they have made more initiatives to be more sustainable, but I personally still don't shop from them because I think it's for the wrong reasons. I think it's just because they're trying to get more money off of people. And also because I don't agree with their, like, I guess, model, like the way that they sell their clothes. Because there are so many clothes in their stores and on their websites. It's insane. So it's just kind of thinking about what's important to you and um, just going from there. I know in the past I've definitely bought a lot of accessories from like Forever 21 and stuff, but I'm trying to cut back on that. I only buy like jewelry and stuff like once a blue moon. So that's kind of what my whole logic was behind buying that stuff. But I think I'm still gonna like not shop at Forever 21 from now on. The Good On You app also introduced me to this thing called greenwashing. Cause like I kind of loosely heard about greenwashing before, but I didn't realize it was a thing until I got this app. And there was a really popular fa fashion retailer on there who was, you know, everybody was saying that this was like a sustainable place, like an ethical clothing place because on their website, they preach radical transparency, but um, yeah, they haven't shown any receipts and I'm not going to, call this brand out by name. Well, actually, yes, I am. Everlane. Um, yeah, Everlane, guys. <sighs> it breaks my heart because I was going to buy something from Everlane, too. Then I got this app and I was like, oh my god, they haven't disclosed their... What? Download this app. I don't care. Like, if you're going to do anything in this video, download this app so you can see the truth be exposed, you know, to what all of your favorite retailers are doing, your fashion retailers are doing. I think, you know, at the end of the day, the ideal is buy some items secondhand if you just want to fill up your wardrobe and you, you know, you just want shorts or something, like go to the thrift store and buy a bunch of shorts, like that's fine. But also support the brands out there who are trying to make a difference and who are trying to give garment workers a better life. If you find something at a thrift store that you really like, but it doesn't really fit you exactly right and you think you can make it cuter, learn how to sew, get yourself a sewing machine, invest in one, alter your own clothes so that you don't just like have a bunch of stuff sitting in your closet and you're like, I'm gonna go to the tailor and get this tailor, but you never do. Um, learn how to do it yourself. When you learn how to make your own clothes, like a world of possibilities opens up because you can go to the thrift store now and buy like a freaking sheet and make a dress out of it and that's awesome. And I guess like if those things don't work out and let's say you just really really need a new pair of shoes and you can't afford anything else like maybe your favorite pair of heels just broke right you really need a new pair of shoes and you didn't save up for this because you didn't anticipate this to happen um you have a job interview tomorrow you need to buy new shoes now go to good on you see what the what's the best you can do right look at the different fast fashion brands look at the way that they're ranked be like okay well like Yes, this brand isn't good for the environment, but they have really great labor practices in place and I really need new shoes. So I'm just going to buy this one thing from this brand and hopefully I won't have to buy anything else from them for a really long time. So yes, guys, this is, I guess, a really convoluted guide to how to be a sustainable shopper. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, leave a like, comment, subscribe if you want to. I hope this video was informative for you guys, and yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.